Good morning. It's my pleasure to be with you again. Uh, before we do anything else, though, we need to thank uh, Cindy Day. She uh, stepped in where she was most needed, uh, has managed this uh, museum uh, in the face of adversity, and uh, we're, we're here today and able to operate uh, primarily because of Cindy. All the volunteers pitched in, but Cindy, thank you. Before I begin, uh, there is an announcement I want to make. The Caldwell County Historical Society is going to take an excursion to Patterson School this Saturday for a tour conducted by Eliza Plaster. Uh, if you wish to be there for that, uh, that uh, tour, meet there at Patterson School at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. Bring a, a, a bag lunch if you want to have lunch. Uh, and uh, I think they're planning to have a time for lunch on the veranda. Uh, I, on the veranda. Uh, what's the name of that hall uh, uh, where the, the main building is? Uh, right now I can't remember. On the veranda. Whatever building there is, that's where you'll go. Right. Uh, and I think, uh, of course, that will be enjoyable. Uh, my subject today. Yes, sir. Ah, thank you. Please. Uh, we need to actually cut off cell phones. Even though a cell phone is muted, it does create an interference with the signal that passes, the wireless signals that pass from here to there. And so, if you will, please turn off the cell phones. Seven Hills of Lenore with the Honorable Judge Beverly T. Beale. Now, first question, can you see it okay? I can't do any better, <laughs> but I thought I would ask. We're going to be talking about different properties uh, and how these tracts of land developed over a number of years uh, in Lenore by looking at the high ground. Now, those of you who love the classics know that the, we often refer to the seven hills of Rome. I can't even name them anymore. But there were seven hills, and those hills had importance to the people of, uh, the, uh, of Rome because they represented different aspects of their lives that were very important. Well, there are many hills in Lenore. I had to choose, because we only have limited time, seven. I thought seven was a good number anyhow, so it's so classical. And I, I chose, but there are others that we could have included. I'll mention those at the end. But if you really think about it, when the city of Lenore, the town of Lenore was actually formed, there was only one hill. If you look at the original map and match it up in your mind, and it's back there, you'll realize that there really is only one hill, and that is at the square. Now, in, four, in three of the four directions on the compass that you proceed away from the square, you go downhill. So you come uphill to the square except one, and that is the gentle incline up North Main Street toward a property we'll be mentioning called Cherry Hill. How many of you are familiar with Cherry Hill? Some of you are not. That's good. Now, uh, the cemetery, Bellevue Cemetery, is up that way. So, for whatever reasons, and there were many, and you, some of you know those stories, uh, we, we, the, the choice was made for the town to sit there. And the land was contributed by uh, Mr. James Harper and by a Mr. Bradshaw. And that little story is back there also. And then the lots were sold, laid off, a little survey map was done and they were laid off and sold at public auction. And uh, some of the Lenore family, the Harper family, those families bought, some of them bought back the land they gave. But uh, that was how the, the town uh, began. Uh, but now the city increased over the years. And so my, my interpretation of what I needed to give you, what I hope, thought would be interesting, is a, an expanded version of Lenore, not the original. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here very long. And, and the real expert on that, on downtown Lenore, is Mike Gibbons. And if you want to know about, about downtown Lenore and its history and the shops and the, the properties, Mike Gibbons is your man. He did a recent tour. Everyone, I think, who participated enjoyed that. And there may be another one. Uh, he does that so very well, and we appreciate him uh, for doing that work. Uh, 
so I'm going to be talking about seven different areas and it's my goal not to look to turn around I have it over here so this is our presentation seven hills of Lenore and I want to say thank you to Bill Tate I'm using many many photographs from Bill Tate's library digital library that he himself by himself compiled of digital photographs of our history he 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 uh, touched them up made them better you'll see those today most of these photographs Bill Tate uh, has collected and put in this he has over 10,000 I think almost 11,000 photographs of Lenore and Caldwell County and if you ever want a set of them see Bill Tate uh, he doesn't charge much for that honestly for the value you're getting and they're organized in folders there's even a search engine it's just wonderful Bill I think it's available here for a small donation thank you Bill that's right you can you can get it uh, usually we have to call Bill to say hey Bill help us with this but if you want to bring a flash drive and a small donation, uh, you can have all those photos on your computer. 16 gigabyte. Six, a 16 gigabyte flat, uh, flash drive. Uh, and I don't have one handy, but you all probably know what a flash drive is. So I want to thank Bill Tate, Lucy McCarl, who's here, uh, Jim Harper, who now lives in Charlotte, uh, Mary Lib Bush Todd, who is here. Good morning. And uh, Doris Bush, her sister, not her sister-in-law, but her, her cousin, yep. uh, Jerry Spicer. Now, Jerry did the presentation on Lorenco a few months ago, and I'm borrowing from Jerry a whole lot. And, and, and I found out that the first time I'd ever heard, how many of you know where Lorenco is? Some of you know Lorenco, some of you don't. Uh, Bobby Watson, our librarian. Uh, a job, Miss, uh, J uh, John Bell, that's John Bell, that's two L's. We get this now, there's two L's there, two L's. One L, two L's. I couldn't afford, our family couldn't afford two L's. <laughs> Bobby Watson for the library that's so, so well uh, prepared to help me. Uh, Jeff Bryant right here who helped me do some of the research. And of course, three people who passed on. W.W. W. Scott, whose book, The Annals of Caldwell County, is important to us. Nancy Alexander's book, Here Will I Dwell. And of course, our, our late director here, Jeff Stepp, whose uh, leadership we did cherish and who had so much to offer us in the way of being a historian. So, thank you to all of these folks. Uh, this is a view looking up North Main Street from downtown Lenore. Uh, I don't know what year, but obviously it's a long time ago. Uh, think about this though, folks. Look how wide that street is. Uh, how for, far-sighted these people were. They didn't put little streets here. They made broad streets. Now, that was important to a city, a town, in its development. Someone saw that. Some towns don't have that large uh, street. The town of Lenore is laid out on the same plan as the town of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, the, the, the basic map is with a square and a, and a traffic circle in the middle, and originally uh, the courthouse was intended to be in the middle of the traffic circle. Uh, we've been to Gettysburg recently. Judy and I went up there. You can't, you can't see it on the ground the same. It doesn't look the same because of the terrain. Uh, uh, it, it's just different, but, uh, and that's because uh, uh, Lucy, which one family was? The Harpers came from Fairfield, Virginia. Uh, strike that, Fairfield, Pennsylvania, which is near Gettysburg. And that's where the idea came from to put, to use that same floor plan or uh, map. Uh, I'm gonna start with the Harper Bell, Harper Bell home known as Fairfield. I'm sure all of you know where Fairfield is out on West Harper. Now, uh, it's important to understand that uh, the Bell family uh, have, has been here for a long, long time. Uh, this was a land grant, according to John Bell. I, you can't find the land grant if you look in the public records, and that's one of the ways I went here, was to, to go to the public records and, uh, uh, of the Register of Deeds. And uh, Mr. Rash has a wonderful opera operation there. And you can look at the land records of Caldwell County online. It doesn't take much uh, ability to see at them all. You can search through those, it's wonderful. But uh, uh, a land grant is the source of their title. Kirk uh, strike that, Fairfield. Fairfield was a large tract of land. All these tracts of land I'm going to talk about at one time, uh, with maybe some exception 
were large tracts of land. Uh, so the Bell family's home fair field that you see in this older uh, photograph uh, is located there and it's been doing undergoing renovations recently. Now a point I'm making, these are all on hills. You may not think of it if you don't walk it or look at it correctly, but you're going uphill at a pretty good incline from the city. This is looking back toward downtown and I'm standing right in front of Fairfield when I took this photograph. You're going downhill there. Doesn't seem that way, but it is. Uh, I invite you to do, do a little walking and see that. Uh, there's a bakery down here at the bottom of the hill now where Lenore Ice and Fuel. Uh, I, I took the photograph and I bought some bread. I mean, you know, uh, I have no interest in that business whatsoever. Uh, this is an, a, a picture of, the, of, of Fairfield at a different time, but notice that Fairfield is, is a, is a uh, wood-sided building. Uh, clapboard is an old phrase for that. Frame house is another phrase for it, but it's, it was wood siding. Uh, later, uh, brick was applied. This is a photograph I took a few days ago. The house is doing, doing some renovation there, interior now. Exterior has been done pretty much. Uh, this is a photograph looking from the front entrance. Let's see if I can go back. The front entrance of Fairfield, and I think, I'm not sure from what angle that is, but at any rate, in a at a time when there was some snow and ice on the ground looking towards Lenore. Uh, and there's some ladies standing there, a younger lady, an older lady, and there's someone over here, I believe, standing there. And I don't know exactly what they're doing. They look like they're reading from a prayer book or some, some sort of a, a book. And, and uh, that's a, a snowy day there. Now, this is the home of Harold Coffey. Uh, you're familiar with it. On the a corner of Maple and Harper. Uh, that was part of Fairfield. So I'm trying to give you an idea of how large this tract is. You know the story about, about, the, about the coffee home being sold at auction? Uh, John Bell bought the house at the auction after the death of Mrs. Coffey. And of course renovations were necessary, so John and Josephine started in and they found in the middle of the house a room with no doors. Now this story John and corroborated is true, personally. A room with no drawers. Well, of course, that's a mystery. So the contractor found the right place for the door and broke into it. Inside were shelves of non-tax paid alcohol from the Prohibition era. Uh, has anyone else heard that story? Yeah, we, we've, we've heard it. Uh, on the tour, right. And so uh, there are mysteries these days. We don't know where you're gonna come up on another one. Uh, we're not advocating the use of alcohol, you understand, neither would the Bell family. Uh, this is the Fairfield Cemetery. Fairfield Church was a small log building used by several denominations in the early days of the settlement of the county. It's on Fairfield. Up at Mimosa, go up Harper, Harper Street, uh, Bell Street, and, and around the corner, sort of tucked up there on top of a hill. This is actually a higher point than is the house of, of Fairfield, uh, the home place, but I think the reason is, of course, at the time, uh, the, 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 the Fairfield location was more accessible by road, and they wanted to be close to the road. If they'd been back there where the cemetery is, it would have been a hard way to get there, for, and you were away from the traffic. But Fairfield Cemetery, uh, a number of people, that, the names of which you would recognize, including Spainhauer. Uh, and and uh, it's a lovely spot, uh, the cemetery up there, and uh, it's, it's kept up pretty well. You can see from these pictures. Uh, uh, West Lenore School was part of the property. Uh, it was acquired from the Bell family and I would imagine, although I, I did not uh, substantiate this, I would imagine that it was acquired for next to nothing or maybe nothing for the good purpose of educating the children of Lenore in Caldwell County. Uh, it was probably built in the 30s, uh, but that's a large school and that's a part of the Fairfield tract. And of course Fairfield Furniture, uh, Fairfield Chair Company, right on, on Harper, across the street from Fairfield, the home place, is also a part of that tract of land. Now we're going to talk about Kirkwood. Uh, this is the original Kirkwood. This is the original house. Uh, and according to Jim Harper, uh, this is still the basic structure that's there today. Now, 
that house was originally a part that where the house sits is part of the Rankin, Reverend Rankin uh, property. Originally, this was a school. Reverend Rankin and his family members operated the school. His wife uh, and the, the daughters uh, in, were the instructors at the school. And it struggled, as all educational uh, uh, resources such as that would, would, would uh, struggle. Uh, Jim Harper says that Main Street passed by the house. In other words, it had to come up the hill. As you come from, from the north, coming toward town, it would be an upper incline up the hill. You can see how this incline is. And actually passed by the house. Later, it was graded down to the level you see now where Koinonia and the American Legion is. So, the, the, you know, because of modern equipment, they could do that or as, as it developed. But at the time that, that Main Street was created, they didn't have the equipment to, to, to level that out. So Main Street came by there. And this is the original structure. Now this is a photograph taken with the columns and the, the, the pediment porch roof that is there. Jim Harper tells me that his uh, Aunt Margaret, remember Miss Margaret Harper? Miss Margaret uh, was educated at the University of North Carolina and then went on to uh, an art school and had a career in, uh, in, in uh, commercial art in New York City. When her parents became ill uh, as, they, as aging uh, advanced, she came home to take care of them. At some point during that time, she looked at the house and said, this won't do. And she's the one that, that used her artist eye to uh, design and have constructed that columns, the porch and the columns. Now that was an improvement to the house that we saw in the earlier photograph. Uh, and of course it has been enlarged uh, beyond the size of that house we saw in the first photograph. And this is a recent photograph of it uh, with, uh, from a different angle a little bit. And of course hospice uh, operates there uh, and occupies that property. Uh, and that was the result of Ms. Margaret Harper's uh, bequest to, uh, in her will, that the property be used for hospice. And that's why we have that very wonderful resource. And I, I would imagine several of the families in this room have relied upon hospice and have been comforted by the care given to loved ones by hospice organization. Now, I'm, I'm going to pause just a second. I feel certain everyone can hear me. Am I wrong? Anybody cannot hear me? It's very difficult. You can't hear me, Bob Stofko? What? That's what I thought. <laughs> Just checking. Uh, another view of the, the front of the house there. Uh, this is a side view with the wing built by hospice some years ago. Uh, this is a view from Kirkwood toward town, but you see the foliage grows up. And you'll see, I'm going to show you several views from different properties uh, that... Uh, are obscured now, but in earlier photographs we have a view. Now we're going to move on to Davenport as soon as I find my notes. And we're, we're there, aren't we? And I don't really need notes for Davenport. It seems like we know a lot about it. But just to be sure that I don't mislead you. Uh, the, uh, in 1855, the Methodist of the county started a fundraising effort to erect a college in Lenore. And it was named for William Davenport, who was the largest contributor to that subscription process that they called it. Now, William Lenore gave the land for the buildings. And Davenport College for Women opened in 1858, and it closed in 1933, and combined with Greensboro College. Now, the property that is the Davenport property is where we sit and where Del uh, Davenport Elementary School sits and where the ballpark is substantially and going, going toward the Zion United Church of Christ. Uh, and the property uh, was deeded to, from W.A. Lenore to James Harper and W.A. Lenore's trustees in September of 1856 and contained three acres then it appears that there was an additional 10 acres deeded in eight, well, in 1855, that was the first deed, was in 1855. 
So probably we have originally 13 acres here uh, in this site. Uh, and uh, it, it's, that, that's, I sort of refer to it as the front portion because when we get, th this is the old main building here. When we get to the back of the property, we have a little bit different title, but the Davenport Hill uh, main building is there. I think that burned at least once uh, during the time that the, the school, the college was operated. This is the Davenport, uh, another view of that building. Uh, there's a view of Lenore on a cloudy day as seen from Davenport Hill. Uh, we worked very hard. Uh, all of the staff members here one day went upstairs trying to figure out where that view is. Uh, that's not High Brighton back there. Uh, so we kept trying to get, and we couldn't see anything because, again, of the high trees that are now here that were not there then. Uh, then uh, last Sunday, Judy and I went over to the Zion Church and walked toward this building in the grass in front of Davenport Elementary, and we pretty much spotted it. It's looking more west, uh, and, and this, this is probably right in the middle of this uh, p photograph, uh, above the, uh, probably above the barn, in the background of the, behind the barn there, that large building, is probably about where uh, West Avenue is, leading out toward Morganton. And that fence line in the foreground is not really representative of anything, but probably somewhere closer to it, the, the camera than that, is the location of College Avenue. Now that's a guess, but I, did be, I was able to see this mountain over here, name unknown to me. Uh, I, I, I was able to see it through the trees a little bit better than any other view that we had. So I'm pretty sure that that was Lenore, no doubt about it. And if you look in the background, you'll see the spire there. Can you see that all right? That, I'm pretty sure, is the uh, original location of First Presbyterian Church. It's now the location of Lenore Presbyterian Church. But that's, and Kirkwood is to the right. If you look at the photograph, there, up, up that same, that seems to be the incline that would be appropriate. By the way, the Methodist Church property uh, is, is on that hill, but it's uh, where Kirkwood is. It was given to the Methodist by the Lenore family, I'm pretty sure, for the location of that church. There's a book here, 150 Years of Methodism on Church Street. We have copies for sale. If you're a Methodist and want one, they're easily obtainable. See Bobby Watson. It's a very interesting book. This is the house of Dr. Kent, Dr. A.A. A. Kent. Now this house, as far as I can tell, sat in the wooded area right beyond where that parking area is that has the small uh, uh, grouping of trees in the middle of that, that parking area. That house sat there has anyone got any better information than my guess? But, uh, sorry? I think that's what the road I remember. Okay. I remember seeing it as a child. Yeah, Is that right? Seeing it as a child. Now, Dr. Kent was a physician, but he became a, a businessman to a very great extent, investing in different furniture manufacturing firms and developing land. Kent would. He, he was developed by Dr. Kent and others. And that's part of this high ground. Uh, but I don't have the time to go into that in depth. But that's, that's a, you know that community well. Some of you live there. Uh, it's, it's, uh, so this property was used for educational purposes and for residential purposes. Uh, Dr. Kent, I think, retired to Florida and got into another business. Uh, of some sort. He was evidently very good at management and, and uh, finance and business. His son, Alfred, I believe, followed Arthur, followed in his footsteps as a physician also. Now this is a view back toward, back toward Davenport, I believe. Would I be correct to think that that building you see up there in the left is this building? Does that look right to you? Uh, and that house there, I believe, is Dr. Spainhower's house. And that house, that little small building there, the two-story building back there, I believe was Dr. Spainhower's office. 
it had a porch, a second floor porch, if you remember that, and I remember it when I was a child, uh, sat across the street from the fire department and, and the police department, and it had a lot of, I call it filigree, and I called it the gingerbread house as a little boy, because it had, and it still exists. It's now been moved out into the county and is on the property of Margaret Martin. Uh, and that's, that's something I would dearly love to see sometime. I haven't had a chance to go see it. Now we're going to talk about Cherry Hill. Now this is a map of the, of the, uh, of the city. I think this is a 1902 map. Remember, the ex expansion of the city. This is a city map. You'll see a little oval in the upper right hand corner. And you'll see that road proceeding there at the top of the page. To, uh, just above that oval, it says cemetery. That's an intersection, and the other direction is called Vance Street. And you see it has a jag in it there, a uh, point, and comes down. Uh, Vance comes, turns, you know, 45 degrees, and then comes back on Scroggs. Just above that road, that Vance at the top, that is as close as I get to a map of where the Cherry Hill property is located. Cherry Hill has a very interesting history. Uh, and uh, it goes back into the 1880s. A man named R.C. Miller occupied the location before the Cherry Hill house was, was built. Now, I cannot establish exactly the size of the original parcel, um, but it passed through many hands, and, and some of it was, was parceled out, as we say. But about 1883, it appears it was sold to a Mr. Thomas Barber. Barber sold it to a Mr. Kirby, and it appears that Mr. Kirby might have sold it to Mr. Dula. Uh, now, the source of this is Ruth Walsh. I should have given her credit, too. Uh, a magazine article we have here in the museum, a notebook on Cherry Hill. And then the house was built in 1858 by Thomas J. Dula. Then uh, he sold it to Colonel George Folk, and at that time, that deed shows 15 acres. Colonel Folk conducted a law school there. Now you have to understand that after the Civil War, there were many soldiers with a pretty good education coming back from the war with nothing to, to, to look forward to. And many of them felt they could be lawyers and many uh, lawyers who had practiced before the war set up law schools, very common. And so there were a couple of law schools in this county, but uh, uh, Colonel Folk operated a law school there, and he was followed by Colonel Silly, Clinton Albert Silly, who was a mayor and perhaps the first mayor of Lenore. He was a union officer. This is a Yankee here we're talking about. Hey, hey, watch it. Oh, oh. <laughs> he won the Medal of Honor at the Battle of Chickamauga. He became quite beloved to the local folks for his kindness as an administrative person here during the occupation, the military occupation. And uh, he married one of the Harper girls. I think her name was Emma. That's another wonderful story also. Uh, it's recounted as almost a, a romantic interlude in our history. If you ever get a chance to read about Colonel Silly, he died and is buried in Catawba County. Uh, uh, J.B. Atkinson purchased it, and, and Colonel Silly operated a law school there too. Folk and Silly were very good friends on opposite sides of the war, but they became fast friends. J.B. Atkinson purchased the property from Colonel Silly, and Fred May bought it from him, and Roby Robbins bought it then, and Nellie Hartley uh, owned it at some point subsequently, and he, she sold it to B.F. Sprinkle, and then ultimately came in the hands of Jack and Ruth Walsh. And I'm sure many of you remember Jack and Ruth Walsh. Uh, I certainly do. They had four daughters, uh, and several of them were in, law, were in high school with me. Mary was the one that was in my age. And later it went into the hands of Joe Cosby, and then I believe the owner now evidently is a Mr. Cremens or McCremens. The property is not in good shape. This is the original view of it many years ago, a very fine photograph taken of, of Cherry Hill. And it sits right up above and you can almost see it from North Main Street, just past the intersection with Vance Street, the first intersection with Vance Street. There are two intersections with Vance Street. The first one you come to is on the other side is 
the rock house that was the Rab home, the city home of John Perkins Rab, and Mary's Grove is the county home, or the, uh, the, the country home. They're both stone constructed. But that's Cherry Hill, and it sits right over Main Street, but it doesn't face Main Street. That's another view. Isn't it a lovely house? Now, this photo, I, could, I tried to take a photograph of it the other day and could not get to the front of the house because of the overgrowth. The best I could do was here. It was improved. Those window frames are, are new, uh, uh, and the siding is new, but that's as close as I could get to it. I can't tell you any more about what it looks like now, but I don't, it's not occupied, and it is generally in disrepair, and the property is overgrown. Uh, it probably was a working farm at one time, all these properties were working farms at one time. Uh, Mary, uh, Mary Lib, didn't you tell me that, that the property I'm going to talk about on Prospect Street had a working farm there too? The bush on High Street, right. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but these, these properties, that, that, that remember that at that time in our history, l the ownership of land was the basis of wealth. Industry was not as important as agrarian enterprise. So that's why large tracts of land, to be profitable, you had to produce something from the land, whether it be a crops or, or uh, meat, cattle, whatever it might be, uh, corn for the, to be milled. That's, that's, that's how that functioned. But I'll make another point later. At any rate, we're going to talk about Prospect Street and High Street now. And this is another map. And you'll see the, the curve to, to the left. That's High Street Circle, it's called. And on the top of that hill, on high, and if you know how you get there from here, you would go out uh, West Avenue toward Fairfield turn on Broadway, go about a block, turn on Prospect, and then you gradually climb. Well, you don't gradually climb, you climb. And you climb the hill, and you go up there uh, high enough past some old stately homes. Now, we're gonna look at that in just a second. And eventually, you're going to arrive at the top of the hill, and that property, at one time, was a very substantial piece of land owned by Ransom Bush. But let's move on to this this is a view from Prospect Street taken at an early time toward Lenore. Now, I believe if you look to the right of center and in the background, just to the left of, the, the, of High Brighton Mountain there, you'll see a church. Can you see that church there? I believe that is St. James. But here's the thing, and Mary Lib, correct me on this. At the time this photograph was taken, that church was oriented not the way it's oriented now. Now you think of it as facing College Avenue. But at that time, it faced uh, North Main Street. North Main Street. And it was it, by the, the uh, renovations and improvements, the orientation's been changed. Now remember, the property upon which it sits at one time and it's one of those hills I didn't have time to, to de deal with, but 900 prisoners were encamped on the grounds of St. James uh, at a time when Union forces came through Lenore and they were towing with them 900 Confederate prisoners. The local townspeople did their best to try to provide food and clothing for those prisoners. Uh, and the, uh, the, the, the Union Army uh, uh, commandeered, let's use the term commandeered, uh, food from local people. And uh, I think uh, Jim Harper told me a story about Fairfield that there was a side porch and the roof of it had caved in at some time before the war and a, another roof over it was built so there was a large storage space up there. The family stored their canned goods and dried meats up in that area. When the, the Union forces came through uh, looking for food, they searched the houses for food and could not find that, didn't find that stash, didn't find it. And that's how the family uh, was able to be sustained by the hidden food that they had at that time. 
Uh, but anyhow, that's a view from Prospect Street looking toward Lenore. There's a, the, a bill. I need to ask you about this photograph. It's obviously something that was published, but below that you'll see a map. And that little map has at the bottom of it uh, a, a one, two, there are eight or nine parcels identified, and there's a little uh, legend of, of what each parcel is. Uh, the St. James is in the background there. It's a very similar photograph to the one we saw before. And Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Spainhower's house and his office are in that photograph also. And the first jail is the small building. Uh, no, it's not so small. It's a larger building uh, in the left side mid photograph. And also in that photograph is the Farthing House, which was a, uh, a rooming house. The Farthing family operated uh, in that photograph also. But that's another view. Now, the caption of the, the first photograph says, looking north, north, Lenore, North Carolina, looking east from the present Prospect Hill Street Hill. Mountain, Highbright Mountain in the background. And here's a note from, I think, Lynn Bernhardt shot this photograph. Uh, you remember Lynn, Jean's husband? who was a photographer. Date unknown, but this is the earliest photo of the town to my knowledge. And that's talking about this photograph here. He didn't take the photograph, obviously. I'm sorry, that was wrong. But he, he must have collected it somehow. This is my photograph the other day, attempting to show the same location. Attempting. Uh, I failed. But it, it's close. But now to the left, you have a, a large, in the foreground or midground, you have the large brick building, that's part of Harper Furniture. Now, what you're gonna see next, I believe, is one of the houses up there. Now, this is the current condition of this particular house up there. There are several stately homes up there. And a couple of them are in just, just falling down. But for some reasons, and I didn't know about it, several of these houses are being renovated quite nicely, as a matter of fact. Surprisingly, uh, this is one of them. Uh, and, and when I was there, uh, I could see workmen and hear hammers banging. Uh, it looked like to me, though, it was uh, these are these are being restored by people who have the skills and own the property. They're not hiring contractors. They're working on it slowly. But there's one. There's another of those houses up on Prospect Street, and from left to right, you're on going uphill. I think I'm going backwards, aren't I? Here we go. Now, on Prospect Street, you come to a point where you see this stone wall and these stone steps. This uh, is the location uh, where once there stood the Ransom Bush home. Now, Mary Lib Todd is the daughter of Ransom Bush. And Jean and Rooster and Richard, Jack, uh, the children of Ransom Bush. He acquired this property. Give me a minute and I think I'll be able to tell you. Uh, part of it he acquired from a woman uh, who is, is here, I swear he is somewhere. Um, And Philip, Philip is another one of the children. I didn't mention Philip, did I? Uh, I did some title searching on that property, and uh, part of it had been laid off into building lots and was sold by a woman, and then part of it came from other sources. I have my notes from my discussion with you, Mary Todd, Mary Lib, but uh, uh, I'll find them in a minute. But, oh yes, the uh, Baptist Association owned this property at one time. That's going to be an interesting little piece of this puzzle. And uh, uh, Mary Lib told me that there was a ball field up there. 
and that regularly donkey ball was played. Is that right? Did I get that right? And the children would go watch on a ball field up there. Now, if you listen to Jerry Spicer and my brother David, if you ever talk to him, there was a ball field in Lenore every, uh, every one mile. There are ball fields all over the place. Baseball was very, very significant. Uh, Charles Hathcock. You remember growing up here? I grew up on the corner of Prospect and Broadway Street. On the corner. On the corners of Broadway and Prospect. <coughs> six years. My first six years. Your first six years. You know the neighborhood then, and you know, uh, and you know Lenore, and you know how there was a ball field. There are many b baseball fields. Of course, ours is the East Harper School. East Harper School. Everywhere had a baseball field. Well, there was a ball field up there. And one of the things they did up there was a ball field. And you told me that it was a working farm. That property was a working farm. Is that right? Yeah, I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But it was Ransom Bush. Anything over five acres is defined as a farm. That's a good way of looking at it. Don't tell my wife that. She'll start to make me plowing again. Uh, but uh, there was the, the uh, school there, uh, and it was operated by the Baptist Association, uh, and it was called Lenore Academy. But before I get to that, I want to show you a photograph of the house that no longer exists home. Isn't that a lovely home? Now just, just think about it a second. That beautiful home is no longer there. Uh, that, that's, that, that's, and you grew up in that house, is that right? Mary? I'm sure you've got wonderful memories of living on top of that hill. This is Lenore Academy. From all indications, all the evidence I can find based on what Mary Liv told me and, and my research of the title. Lenore Academy operated for a, a, a number of years in the turn of the century. That is, this picture I think was probably taken about 1906. This photograph was collected by Bill Tate. And I found it, when I, when I heard about the school up there, I started doing research. And I found that High Street, or High Circle, was originally called, and it may be in here, in that map, uh, uh, well, another street was up there was referred to as Academy Street. So I looked for Lenore Academy in Bill, Bill's library of photographs, and there it was, along with a brochure about the school, which was intended to entice uh, families to send their children there. And uh, it, was, it was considered a wonderful location up on that pretty hill. Uh, remember that one thing people at that time feared was, it was, was the disease. And if you lived on a hill, you had both a breeze and you had distance from, from the low country. Water runs downhill altogether now. Water runs downhill unless it's under pressure. Right, Dave Groom? Correct. That's right. So uh, you wanted to live on top of the hill because you were drier there and you did not want to be down where the pasture was because of the cattle and the, 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 what you might have a bog or a swamp or a wetlands where malaria might come from the mosquitoes. And don't forget the leeches either, by the way. Uh, and the water was pure if you dug a well on a high level, that sort of thing. Uh, all those things came into play. That's the re one of the reasons people wanted the high ground if they could acquire it. But this building is no longer there. Now that was pre that preceded the Ransom Bush home place, didn't it? The build that building was there. Now, am I, does that look like the building that? Because I haven't had a chance to ask you about this. That's the building. That's Lenore Academy. There's an there was an Academy Street there that came around there. Yeah, and the property when it was no longer operational. The property was given by the association to the Lenore High School. Now, Lenore High School, I think at that point, was not really a public school. It might have been a district, a school district, where the people of the district supported it, but that property went to Lenore High School. 
From thence, I cannot tell you the title. I didn't have time to search it. Now we're going to talk about College Avenue, Bernhardt Avenue Court, and Highbright. This, to me, was a very interesting parcel of land. Again, it was a substantial piece of land. And I'll find my notes on that in just a second. Uh, you know where it is. If you go to Norwood Street, the intersection with uh, College Avenue, and start climbing the hill. You're on College Avenue. When you get to the crest, you have a dog leg to the right, and it becomes High Brighton Avenue. And right there, there is a, a, an entrance to Bernhardt Court. And that's where Lucy McCarl lives. Now, that parcel of land was originally about 40 acres. And it uh, was owned by uh, a Mr. Gustavus Westman. Mr. Westman was a Swede who operated a store here along with the Hammerschold family. All recent arrivals from Europe, from Sweden. And he was said to have operated the second, they operated the second store in Lenore. I think we take the term store to mean general store. Hardware, uh, farm supplies, uh, feed and seed, flour, foods, canned goods. I believe that's what was meant by that. Um, Ransom Bush. And he, I, I did some search this morning, and I think he required that property from Sarah Lenore. Now, I'm not going to tell you anything about Sarah Lenore because I don't know much about Sarah Lenore. But Sarah Lenore is Sarah J. Lenore. It's not Sarah Gwen Lenore, as far as I can tell. Lucy, do you know, have, have any reference to Sarah J. Lenore? <laughs> I don't believe she ever married. I believe she was a Lenore. But that's, that's guess work. But she owned a lot of property. And in, uh, and in Nancy Alexander's book, there is a location where it says in, in 1887 there was a lot of flooding and landowners including, and it lists a number of landowners, names you would recognize, and one of those names is Sarah Lenore. Sarah Lenore, not Sarah Lenore and her husband, not the widow Sarah Lenore, not Mrs. Sarah Lenore, Sarah Lenore. Sarah Lenore. I have a feeling this woman was a rather independent person. And I think she inherited some property. And she, like a lot of women in this room, and in the Bible, Lydia, was a pretty good business person. I have that feeling. But that's a mystery you'll have to solve. I don't have time. Now, this is the entrance to Bernhardt Court. If you go around the circle there and come all the way around to the left side here, you'll wind up in front of Lucy McCarl's house, and you're always graciously welcomed at Lucy McCarl's house. I always have been. Uh, she is part of the, the family. Now, this, this was, uh, that, that site on top of that hill was the site of the G.L. Bernhardt home. Now, Mr. Bernhardt, and here's the story, W.W. W. Scott sell, says uh, he was writing in 1927, but Gustav Westman died and owned this property at the time of his death. He was not ever married. He was a well-known local public servant, citizen, uh, very likable person evidently, uh, and, and participated in the community a great deal. But he died owning about 40 acres there. And uh, Scott says that uh, a syndicate and I found out that that was the Caldwell and Watauga Land and Timber Company. Not a corporation, but he refers to it as a syndicate. Uh, consisting of W.C. Irwin, J.L. Nelson, John, and Lynn Bernhardt. Now I think that's John Bernhardt and his, what, brother Lynn? Lynn Bernhardt. Otherwise referred to as G.L. G.L., okay. Uh, and Mrs. M.M. M. Gwynn, J.C. Siegel, and a Mr. Tyree, and Scott evidently invested in it himself. Uh, the, they bought the land at a sale by a commissioner, selling it out of the Westman estate. And uh, 
The deed is recorded at book 21, page 74, and the Samuel Patterson was the commissioner. And uh, the date of it is May 7th, 1888. Now, I believe you told me a story that uh, G.L. Bernhardt wanted to build the house at the location of what I call the Mutual, Loan, Mutual Savings and Loan Association at the corner of Norwood. You know, the house, it's a French revival or whatever. You know the building. It's empty now. He wanted to build the house there, but Mrs. Bernhardt said, nope. To date, this is the only known photo of the Schur house. If it's going to be built, it's going to be built on top of the hill. Thus, it was done. And uh, that's where their house sat. Uh, later on, the property was subdivided, and in 1957, Jim and Lucy McCarl obtained the property and built their house there. Uh, and uh, George Bernhardt, George uh, Bernhardt, George and Catherine built a house there and other members of the family. And uh, uh, the uh, property is, uh, the lots were sold along High Brighton to uh, Courtney and Gwen and in, in one location, Laura Norwood. Laura Lenore Norwood built this house. I believe she and her sister or sisters. And Laura Norwood died in that house. I knew it as, as the home of Gertrude Blackwell. I took voice lessons there. Some of the rest of you did also. Uh, I think she was known to her friends as Trudy. And she had a class right here in this building. Yes, she did. She taught school here. Uh, and uh, she was a lovely person. I called her Miss Blackwell. You know that. But uh, she was a lovely person and a very good instructor in voice. Uh, I was a very bad student. But that's, that house is, is uh, and Jeff Stepp was a real uh, student of the history of Laura Lenore Norwood, and uh, he, he made a presentation about her some years ago. Uh, uh, she was a teacher at Davenport, Laura Lenore Norwood. Uh, and uh, this is a house that stood the Lynn Hall family home on College Avenue. And I believe one of the children of that family is married to Steve Rousevitz. Is that right, Bill? Correct. Right. And uh, that house, I do not know where that house was located. It's no longer there, is it, Lucy? Uh, but according to the information there, that house stood on that property. Uh, that's uh, Barbara and Larry Freeman's house uh, there on top of the hill. And uh, this picture is in here, not the log home. You know this house. But the reason I put it in there is because the hill behind it is the crest of the hill of the Bernhardt Hill property. But now you have to realize if you're on Harper Street where East Harper is on the right as you're going toward town, and you know how that, that hill is really chopped off. It's coated with a kudzu to hold it in place. But I remember when it was not, it was a sloping gently toward East Harper School. And I believe Mr. Barringer uh, Barringer Oil Company bought the property and excavated that. That's my recollection. And their businesses then were established there on, on the street. Uh, but that's, that's the crest of the property. Lucy says that wooded area is sort of a buffer. There's no development behind your house over that in that area, even before you get to the crest. So that's why those large trees are there. It creates a buffer zone, privacy, and, uh, and again, I'm showing you the, the altitude, the height is a factor here. Uh, now we're going to go to Lorenco, Lenore Realty and Insurance Company purchased uh, some property uh, from Sarah Lenore, actually from her estate. And the property was surveyed off into small building lots. Those lots were sold uh, to a number of people. Now this property adjoined the property of, of several people, but cotton, the cotton mill uh, it was a cotton mill that joined that property. And the, the property uh, developed into property for moderate homes, modest dwellings. And looking at the, you would think that these, these fellows would develop it themselves, they would build the houses, but they didn't. Now, again, that was a group of people that, that bought the property. Uh, and J.C. Siegel was involved in that. And I believe Bernhardt's and Harper's were involved in that too. 
I'm working as hard as I can to find my notes, but I'm also trying to finish on time. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the property is laid out. It's a large tract of land going down to Realty Street, going all the way down to uh, Warrington Boulevard. Correct. Realty Street. Uh, this is Realty Street and Lenore Avenue is in that neighborhood. That's the top of the hill at Willow. So you have to go up Willow Street from the high school, past the Catholic Church on the left. And you go up there, Spainhower Avenue. Spainhower Avenue follows the, the, the crest of the hill pretty much. Then over uh, and then on the other side, going downhill, all that land, all the way down to Bluebell. And the people that bought those lots, it were, they weren't sold in groups to some contractor or some company. Most of those titles go out to individuals who built homes. Now, think about that, folks. These are, these are people of modest means. They're factory workers. But they had the opportunity to buy a parcel of land and build their own home. And savings and loans were important, and that get processed, didn't, weren't they? Because those people had to borrow money. Uh, I'm sure everybody benefited from this type of business transaction, but it's still important to think of people with modest means being able to buy a home. Now, a lot of them, I think, eventually uh, became rental property, and rental property now. That's a blank slide. Now, there's a street, just that photo taken just the other day. Uh, some of this area is very nicely kept, and some is in disrepair and not as well kept. But there's the Bluebell at the bottom of the hill, the Bluebell factory. Uh, this Bluebell photo gives me, Bill Tate, the opportunity to advertise our new upcoming video about Bluebell Incorporated the history and interviews with employees. Please look for that in the fall. The video will be posted to Lenore and Caldwell County History on Facebook in association with our Caldwell Heritage Museum. Now, I, 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 my timing is pretty good, but the uses, I want to talk about now how these properties were used. Uh, Look, look at what we, we see when we look at all these different properties that were large tracts of land. Jerry Spicer made that presentation. You're right. There are a lot of good baseball players because they had a ball field that rolled like this and had a gully in it, Jerry said. And you had to be a real good baseball player not to break your leg. <laughs> and they, that's a good training area, I'm telling you that. Uh, uh, but look how these properties were used. Uh, in different ways. Uh, a lot of it for residential purposes, like Lorenco and, and uh, um, Kentwood. Churches, uh, Fairfield, Methodist, First Methodist, uh, and uh, cemeteries, like the Fairfield Cemetery. Schools, such as West, West Lenore, and Davenport. Uh, the people who own this property were in, interested in the best interest of the community to the extent that they would give or sell uh, at low cost, I'm sure, property they had so that, that these uh, opportunities could be created for people. Lenore was considered, or there was a phrase, uh, it was the Athens of the South or something like that. It was the center of learning. This, uh, uh, Nancy Alexander mentions that, doesn't she? It, it, this, was, this was a real, people here struggled to create schools. Some of them went out of existence. Some of them uh, survived. But this place and other schools, Lenore Academy, think about what effort it took to try to keep education going and get an education uh, and industry. Uh, Fairfield Chair is an example. Uh, it's, it's, it's important to, to realize, and, and if you stop this, perhaps we go just a little bit beyond just what I've done in terms of thinking about how in, in our world, in our few hundred years on this continent, uh, the, the European folks that are here now, you know, that, that settle this property, or this land, uh, we've built institutions, we've built homes, we've used land, and those institutions are gone uh, and new ones have been built. The land use has changed. Uh, the homes have been destroyed and new ones 
constructed. And there's so much that has gone on in the past and so many names uh, of people who were important in our lives that we don't even know. We don't know anything about them. You didn't know where Lenore Academy was, did you, until you walked in here? Except for Mary, Mary Lee. Uh, you didn't know, you didn't know about uh, Lorenko, many of you. Uh, all, and, and, and now, up on Prospect Street, the view you had then was great. But now, the view you have is Harper, the backside of Harper Furniture Company. But that's, that's the way life is. I hope that you take away from this the, the idea that time moves on, and the only thing that's constant in this world is change. But it's important to remember from whence we came, and who created the opportunities that we have, and how property was used, and how people developed, and what their real their real goals were and their group, real aspirations and how they benefited us and we don't even know their names. We ought to study history. Thank you very much. Please support our Caldwell Heritage Museum, 112 Vaden Street, Lenore, North Carolina, 28645. Thank you.